Hey guys, welcome back. Fast Monty's Garage. Today we're going to talk about putting the crank in and making sure we use a one piece rear main seal. Some of you may have not seen it before. It's actually really cool and I'll show you how to put it in. It replaces that rope seal in the rear main bearing that is prone to failure and causing a leak in the back of the engine, which is painful to fix because you have to take the engine out. <laughs> now, so now that we're here, if you missed last episode, we checked the oil clearances on the main bearings. So today we have to test fit the crank. We're also going to test the measurements by using some plastic gauge. Assuming that goes well, the next step is to officially put the crank in the block for good, because I don't want to take it out ever again. <laughs> if you're new here, Thanks for joining us. Subscribe if you haven't, because we're going to continue the process of building this engine, putting back in the beast and putting the pedal to the metal. But the first episode here is where I tore apart the engine. Check that out if you missed it. Total bearing failure. We replaced the bearings, blueprinted everything, and now we're ready to move forward, which is super exciting. Be right back. All right, first thing we need to test is our one piece seal. Let me check this thing out. It is awesome. It's one piece because it's molded in one piece and it has a spring steel insert. The reason you want the spring steel insert is obviously you can't just put this on the crank. The crank is, as the, uh, the flywheel flange is larger, you can't just put it on there. We have to cut it and then uh, thread it on like a, kind of like a slinky. Now be very careful. There are knockoffs of this in the marketplace and they do not have spring steel, nor is the molding made of Vitron. So this is Vitron uh, material. The other stuff I've seen is rubber and not spring steel. So when you bend it, it doesn't go back to original sp space and it's deformed. That's not good. So next step here is we got to cut this. And there is a hole on one of these sides. There it is. So you guys see this little hole? This is our cut line. So we take a razor blade, cut right through that hole. That's where the steel stops or does not connect. So now we have our parting line. Now what we're going to do is, and I recommend this for anyone, especially if you don't know the history of your engine, if it's been line honed or anything, because you can have some different uh, elevation changes in your bearing caps. We're going to test fit this in the bearing cap and to see when we fully torque it down to see if this um, impedes with each other. So if it's really swollen, we might have to shave this a bit to get it to fit nice and tight. So let's go ahead and hit the block and put the cap in. As I forgot to mention, this is made by BOP. So you can get it from BOP or you can get it from Butler Performance at the same price. I'll leave a link below. Um, I like Butler because they're super fast at turning shipments around. And um, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Comes with instructions, so we're going to go through that. Here we go. So that parting line we just created should point into the block, right? So it's going to sit in here like this, just like that. And then we're going to put our cap on. And be gentle. You don't want to tear it or pinch on it. And I'm going to go ahead and torque it down. I'll be right back. All right, fully, fully torqued down, and you can see a little bump here, just a tiny ridge where they're pressing together. That's actually okay. If it's excessive, you can actually trim the back side, and I'll show you the location when we take this out, and then remount it and retest it. I also put this in backwards. These hash marks on the lip actually point forward. Not a big deal because we're just testing diameter. The other thing you can do is take calipers and measure this ID, and then measure your journal. And you want to have like a 20 thou overlap, but I'm good to go with the next step. All right, time to test fit the crank. The reason I'm test fitting it is remember, we got the crank reground. We had to blueprint the bearings. We need to make sure there's no binding because if there's binding, then we have a problem. We have to go back to the machine shop. So now's the time to do that. So I'm pretty nervous. Um, so what I did was I, I'm putting motor oil down on the bearing surfaces. I already cleaned the bearings again, by the way. Then I'm going to coat the bearings. I'm going to clean the crank bearings, put the crank in. I'm sorry, the journals and then oil the journals, put the caps on fully torqued. Oh, and we'll see how it behaves. 
Be right back. Oh man, this is heavy. What the hell? Whew. And I got, got my glove caught. Perfect. There we go. Okay, let's put the caps on. All right, we're in. Fully torqued down. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Woo! Like butter! No binding. And you can actually... I'm just playing with I could just uh, do this all day long. My, this is my new fidget spinner. Ha! But as long as you don't feel any sudden stops or sudden binding, you're good. So, oh my god, that's such a relief. Okay, now, next step is, remember our measurements from, from last time was, were mostly 3 thou, uh, number 3 in particular. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this cap, and we're going to use some plastic gauge to see what we get. All right, time to use some plastic gauge. Uh, those of you guys that don't know what it is, it's actually a little filament. It's plastic, obviously plastic gauge. And it comes with these little sleeves. So the different colors represent different uh, thickness ranges. So as you can see on there, the red is two to six thou. And this little measurement tool is when we press this in the bearing, it compresses and based on its thickness, that's the clearance. So I'm actually going to use two today. I'm going to do the, the one to three thou, which is super fine, and the red. And I'll show you where I lay it down and how it goes. I like to just take my scissors and cut a length of it just like this with the paper. That way you don't lose the filament, hopefully. It stays in there. Okay, so I got my green filament and my red filament placed right on top far enough away from each other so they don't touch each other when we compress the bearing. And you can literally do one at a time if you want. I'm more concerned about that red one, so that's why, I don't, that's why it's more on, on top. And make sure the oil hole is not here. <laughs> it's over on one of the sides. So I'm going to go ahead and put the cap back on, torque it down, pull it off, and we should see a nice little some two flat pieces of plastic to measure. Okay, here we go. You can actually see it on the bearing. So we take our little indicator, and you can take a measurement. So right there, it lines up with the white bar. That's three thousandths. So let's take the green one. Green one should obviously be the same. There we go. Three thousandths right on the money, baby. Yes. All right, next step is obviously I'm going to tear this apart. And now is your opportunity, your last chance to clean anything in the engine. So I'm probably going to do that. I'm going to clean up all the oil I put down, probably brake cleaner, lint-free cloth everywhere, whatever, because the next step here is putting the crank in. I'm actually going to put the cam in first. There's no trivial, that's very trivial, but it's easier to do the cam with the crank out because you can hand hold the, the cam. And then I'll put the crank in, show you guys how to install that rear main seal too. All right, before I take the crank out to clean up everything and install the main seal on the crank, I know some of you are going to ask, Hey, Monty, can I install the one-piece seal while the crank is in the engine and engine's in the car? Well, the answer is yes. It's not recommended, but you can push the rope seal out, which is in this groove, and then be very careful, and you can actually thread this in like that and work it or work it around until it comes out the other side and you can put it in if that's too daunting then you can actually get a two-piece version of this so it's actually cut on both sides so it's a half moon and then you can just rotate it into that slot and then rtv the ends and you'd be good to go but again that's not recommended you can damage the seal uh, so if if you can take the crank out but Go ahead and try it if you want, um, and contact BOP if you want to ask them for some more instructions on the crank in method. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out, show you how to put this on on the workbench. 
All right, time to put our main seal on, and this is where it goes. You can see this little hash mark helix pattern on the journal of the crank. And then our mating part, I don't know if you've seen this before, those two holes in there. Those are for anti-rotation of the rope seal. If you have a three and a quarter inch main, you have to put RTV in there and those holes. And same in the block. There are same holes in the block. If you're a three inch, three inch main, you've lucked out. You don't have to do that. We can just put it right on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put high temperature grease in this seal, the interface between this and the uh, crank journal. And if you look real close, see if I can get the camera to focus. There is a, a, a hash mark on the inside lip, just like this hash mark on the crank. That hash mark has to point forward. So I can see it, it's on, it's on this side, so I have it backwards, it should go like this. So after I grease it, I'm gonna go immediately do this slinky trick. So just like that, I'm gonna rotate it onto that, onto that journal. All right, so I got it greased. That hash mark is on this lip facing the front, and I'm just going to rotate it on just like this. Don't worry, it might bend right here. Just like that. It won't come together all the way, which is fine as you can see that. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna push, I'm gonna put that down, pointed down. Cause when I put the crank in the block, that has to be pointed up in the engine, which is upside down right now. So I'm gonna try and line it up right on that hash mark. And be as careful as possible when I put the crank into the engine. And I already have my, I use this on the, all my bearings because it's really sticky. I used it on the cam already, but I'm going to use that, put that all in the uh, main bearings and I'm going to rest this in the block. All right. The trickiest part. All right, so I was basically at the front of the crank in. I had the back of the crank slightly elevated and I pushed, I'm pushing the seal down so it connects at the bottom. That looks pretty good right there. A couple things to note, guys. You can actually push down on the seal this way and you can feel it engage a little bit further down in the bottom. That'll help you out. It's okay if it moves a little bit. When we put our cap on, uh, it'll lock it down and push it into place. Um, go and check your bearings now, because I rotated the crank just to see um, if I, <laughs> frankly, if I removed all the plastic gauge on number three, and I did, I totally forgot to look. Anyway, uh, so if one of your bearings slipped, just take a screw, a flathead screwdriver, and on the side that is, say this, say this one popped up on this side, just push it down gently until the screwdriver and the bearing are flush with the block. And you're good. So we're going to start putting our caps on. So again, be careful. I got all my assembly lube on there, but you want to make sure that sits nice. And put it the right way. That would help. Oh yeah. Like a glove. So again, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest. Tighten it down and tell you what we're in store for next week. That was easy. Hey, if you guys missed the last episode, we talked about main uh, bearing oil clearances. And I said that uh, my engine builder who has been doing it for 30 years was wrong. <laughs> I was right. That's what the test of the crank proved. So if you missed that video, go check it out. It's a lot of math, but it just goes to show you if you think through it and think logically, you can double check whatever your engine builder says or do it yourself. Man, awesome. So... What I used here were um, ARP studs, I forgot to mention that, and they are torqued to 100 foot-pounds. The rear cap is torqued to 110, and you creep up on it. So you start in the middle, say start with 60 pounds, 80 pounds, 100 pounds, and then 110. That's what I did. So the crank is in, it's exciting. And next episode, you guys are going to love it. I'm going to show off the new pistons I got from Butler Performance. They are killer looking. We're going to marry them to rods. 
We're going to put the rods in the block. We're also going to file our piston rings, show you guys how to do that, how to measure it, and we'll move forward. Really straightforward stuff, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, you really should. Follow along in the madness. Until next time, build them fast, drive them faster. See it.